how do you filter one drop down list based on the selection or the value of another drop down list in Microsoft Access 2016? This is another computer tutoring training session. So here we have the problem you can see on our screen here. Um, say, for instance, if I just zoom in, so we've got a lot of data, very spreadsheet in like in fashion. And the idea is, is I want to create a drop down list first for device type. So when I select either a laptop, a desktop, a mobile phone, or a tablet, then the next drop down list is filtered. So if it's a desktop, it will only be an iMac. Uh, it'll be um, uh, an HP Envy. You know, if that's a desktop, it's more of a laptop there. Um, yeah, if it's a laptop, it'll be a Surface Pro. If you want, let's just change that to laptop here. You get the idea. So this, they'll both be drop down lists. The device subtype drop down list will be filtered based on the device type. Now you can do this via queries as well. What we're going to do is going to show you how to create tables out of this as well very quickly. So how do I do that? So first thing I'm going to do is just close down the device, so the table repairs. Uh, I'm going to create a query. So if you click on the create tab just up at the top, so give it that a click. And then what I want you to do is click on query design. So click on query design. So here's the design grid. I've only got one table to add. So I'm going to click on table repairs and click on add and then click on close. So let's just drag this up so you can see. So now I just want a list of device types. So I'm going to click on device type here. Uh, in fact, I'm just going to drag it down to the query grid. Uh, and then I'm going to click on view. And you can see here a list of device types. As you can see though, it's uh, they're repeated. So I've got desktop twice. I've got mobile phone here three times. I need to have unique values. I'm just going to go into SQL a little bit. Very simple. One word you need to add distinct. That's the word you need to add. So we just go back. So if we click on this little drop down menu, uh, is it just over here? There we go. So this this little drop down menu just below view. And we're going to go to SQL view. So make sure you click on SQL view. Good. Okay. Let's just do that. So if I just zoom in, uh, I had a zoom in option here. There we go. Let me just zoom in a bit. I'm uh, just going to zoom in one more time. There we go. So what I can do is I can just add one word, just one word in, and that is the word distinct. So it now says select distinct table repairs device name. That's good. Let me just zoom back. So let's test this one out. If I click on view, I can now see a distinct list. So there's no repetitions. Whenever the desktop appears, it only appears once. Laptop, mobile phone, and tablet. So I think you get the idea with that. So that's fine. That's great. I could save that as a query and I can use that. The trouble is, is if somebody for some reason has got access to the database and is typing in wrong values, then those wrong values are going to be pulled through to this query. So I much would rather much uh, prefer to create a table out of this. And it also give me an opportunity to show you how to make a table. So how do I do that? So if I go back to design view, so that's the view design view button. If you haven't seen this one here before, top left hand corner, you can give that a click. And now if I underneath the design tab here at the top, I just make sure I have a make table selected. So it's make table, click on the make table button. Once you do that, this box appears in the middle and it's asking me for a table name. So I'm just gonna call this TBL device types. So TBL device types. In the current database, click on okay. Almost ready, what I need to do is I need to, in order to create the table, I need to click on this run button up here at the top. So if I click on the run button, it then comes up a message just warning me I'm about to paste four rows into a new table. So I'm gonna say yes, there's my new table here, device types, if I double click on my table, I can see my four device types. Let me just close that table down. 
So now I need to do something similar for the next query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the query down and say no. I could have used that exact query, but let's do it again so we can practice. We're going to go to create, query design. We're going to add table repairs in again. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to add device type and device subtype. Notice I've double clicked on these here just to add them in. So I can double click, a couple of click, clicks with the mouse and then it'll add it to the design grid. If I just drag this up a little bit here, there we go. So it adds it here to the design grid. All right, so again, if I view it, I'm seeing a lot of repetitions. Desktop iMacs repeated here. Uh, yeah, I'm sure many others have been repeated as well. So I just need to make sure that I've got unique values here. So again, if I go to SQL view, so if you remember the SQL view that we clicked last time, so if we go to SQL view, and then again, let me just zoom in uh, here so you can see. So if I type in one word, distinct. So that's select distinct. Great. So let's have a view. And now I have unique pairs. So basically desktop Dell Latitude, desktop iMac, desktop Acer T100, T200, HPN. You get the idea. So there's no desktop with corresponding uh, so device type with corresponding device subtype that are the same. They are unique. So I need to create a table out of that one. So if we go back into design view, we'll click on make table. And I'll call the t table name. If I, I can zoom in so you can see what I'm calling this one. I'm calling TBL device subtypes. So TBL device subtypes. Give OK a click. That's good. And last but not least, in order to create the table, I will have to click on the run button. So if you see the run button on the top left hand corner up here, that's the button we're going to click. And then it warns us we are about to paste 13 rows into a new table. So we click on yes to do that. And there's our new table device types. If I double click, I can say uh, device subtypes rather. And then we can see our device subtypes. Fantastic. So let's close this down. I'm also going to close the query down. Uh, if you're um, familiar with how I do that, it's just across top right hand corner here and give that a, cl um, a click. No, I'm not going to save the changes because I've done what I need with the query. I've created the tables. So next thing I need to do is I need to relate these two here. Uh, to make, in order to do this properly, uh, I will have to create a primary key uh, for device type here. Uh, I'll give you an example of what I mean. So if you've been mucking around with Access a little bit, you might have gone to your database tools at the top to create a relationship. So database tools, you click on relationships. I have uh, device types and subtypes already in here. In fact, if I hide the tables here, you might just see a blank screen like so. You would have to drag device types and drag device subtypes across. Now I want to create a relationship between the two tables. So I use my mouse to drag from device type across to device type. I can click on create. My relationships forge is great, fantastic. However, if I try to enforce referential integrity, so if I go to this here and double click on the line and try and tick this enforce referential integrity. You need to see some of our videos to understand fully what that means, but basically I can't have a subtype without a corresponding device type. So if I click on OK, I get this error. It says no unique index found for the referenced field of primary table, of the primary table. Now you might be thinking, well, hang on a second, I've just created device types. I've got laptop and mobile phone, etc. They are unique. Yes, in our mind there is, but there is the possibility of having a duplicate. So in order to stop that, we need to designate the device type in the device types table as a primary key. That is how we do it. So let's click on OK for this. Let's click on untick uh, enforce referential integrity and click on OK. You can also click on cancel as well if you so desire. We're then going to go to the device types table here, right click and go to design view. So I'll just zoom in so you can see I've just right clicked here on this device types table and I've clicked on design view so that's what we're going to do and then at the top here just make sure the device type is selected you can either right click 
or you can click on the primary key button, but you must make sure that there's a little key appearing to the left of device type, and that will denote or designate that field as a primary key, meaning you cannot have two device types that are the same. You can't have two laptops in there, so it's forcing it. That's good. So now I can save, click on the save button top left hand corner, close down that table. Now I can double click on the line here and enforce the referential integrity and I can get the one to the many because I have the primary key here. Great. So how do I go to now doing one of those drop down lists? I mean, that's what you've come to the video for. Uh, I'll put the time, must remember to put the time stamps below so you can fast forward directly to this point of how you would add the filter. Well, the first thing you need to do is create a form. Um, most people think of forms as just one record at a time, but a form could just look just like a table view, just like a spreadsheet. So how do we create a form? So if we make sure we've got table repairs selected over on the left-hand side, makes it a little easier. And then we're going to go to Create at the top. So to click on the Create tab here at the top. That's it. And then we're going to go and click on Form Wizard just here. So if we click on Form Wizard. So here's our form wizard. I'm just going to make sure I've got the right, oh, we should have selected the right table, but I'm going to go to table repairs. I'm just going to bring all of them across. That's great. Uh, in fact, the repair ID is automatically added, so I don't actually need that one. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So I've got device type, device subtype, and cost. That's good. I click on next, and I want it to be a data sheet. So I'll choose data sheet. That's good. I'll click on next. And what do I want to call this one? So if I just zoom in, I can call this one FRM Repairs, Form Repairs. That's good. Uh, I've got open the form to enter a view information. I can click on Finish. And there we've got our form. So I can add extra data in here if I want to. Um, at the moment, I haven't linked this table up in any way. I can just type in little bits of data if I wanted to. That is good. All right, then. So now, how do I do the drop down lists? So, in order to do the drop down lists, I will go into Design View. So, to go to Design View for the form, if we go up to the top left hand corner here, so up to this top left hand corner, and then we'll click on this drop down list under View. Here we go. And I'm going to go to Design View, and we can see our form here. The first thing we need to do is change this dis device type. Uh, here we need to change that to a combo box. It's Microsoft speak for a drop down list. So if we right click on device type, go down to or up to change to, across and down to combo box and give that a click. And we can see that's changed into a combo box here. Uh, that's great. Now on the right hand side, over where the data is, let me just move myself down a little bit here so you can see. You want to make sure you've got the data tab selected. So click on the data tab there. And then in row source, which is zoom in so you can see, so row source just here, uh, if I just actually go a bit more to the right, you'll see a little ellipsis, like three dots just there. You need to click on it, which will invoke or start the query editor for that combo box. And the row source is where is it getting, where is it getting its items in the list? Where is it coming from? That's good. So what I'm going to do here is click on that button here, and it's there. We go. Goes into the query list here. So all I need here is just a list of device types. So I'm going to click on device types, click on add at the bottom, click on close, and then double drag device type down here. That's fine. So now if I view, you see it's just a list of device types. If I go back to design view, that's all I need. So if I now click on this close button here at the top, so this close button just here, that's it, say yes to save. So if you, in order to see this, if I click on the data sheet view button at the top, so now under the device uh, types, so it's on the left hand side here, I'll talk about changing that at the end, I can click and I can choose the various device types. In fact, the idea is if I just swapped it to this side here and clicked on the drop down lists uh, here, I would choose, say, desktop here, and then now I want a device subtype that will be filtered based on the first choice, based on the device type. So let's do that right now, shall we? So if we go back to design view, 
And now we need to change the device subtype to a combo box. Right click on it, change to combo box, give that a click. Now we need to change the row source. So if we go over to the right hand side, make sure we've got our data type or data tab selected here, and then go over and then we'll click on that little three full stops, that ellipsis button just there. There we go. Okay, we're interested in the device subtypes. So if we, you can double click on this. If I double click, you see it adds the table. Click on close. We just drag the query design grid up so you can see. I'm now going to add both device type. I'm just going to hold the shift key down. You can select more than one field in the query editor and drag that down if you want to. Makes it a little easier. Okay, so if I now view this, I can see all of them. Okay, so if I ran this as a drop down menu, I would see a lot. Now I want to filter, if I go back to design view, this subtype based on device type. So I'll give you an idea of how this works in the criteria. If I just zoom in a little bit to the criteria, if I typed in here laptop, press enter, you see it, it puts the quotation marks in automatically. When I uh, view the query, it's just viewing all of the laptops. Does that make sense? Hope it does. So if I then close this down by clicking on the close button, say yes to make the changes, and then view the data sheets here, when I've got the subtype here, I can click on this. Uh, at the moment it's just seeing laptops here, that's a common uh, mistake, it's just looking at the wrong column. I'm just going to go back and change that, so let's just go back to the drop down menu, choose design view, and over to the row source on the right hand side. I'm just going to uh, hide this first one here, this laptop, and I'll tell you what I'm also going to do is I'm going to swap it around just to be sure, so this is in the second column. Click on the close button, yes to save changes to, this, uh, to the query, and now when I click on the view drop down menu here, the device subtype, if I click on that, it's just showing all the laptops, but unfortunately it doesn't matter what you've clicked here, it's just showing all the laptops. So what I need to do is adjust this so it picks up the value of this field. In fact, this text uh, box on the form. So how do I find out, you know, how does it work? Well, it looks works on the text box name. I need to find out the name of that text box. So if I go back to view, go to design view, I'm going to click on the device type here, and I can see over on the right, under uh, uh, other, the name of the box called device type. Now you can either remember the name or there is a quick way that you can navigate to the name of that box there. So how do I do that? So if I go back to device subtype, because that's where I want to put the query, so click on the device subtype, uh, go over to data on the right hand side, make sure you've got your data tab selected, click on the little ellipsis, so you're back into your query, let's just drag this up a little bit. Now instead of laptop here, I'm just going to highlight and delete that. I'm going to, let me just zoom in a bit as well so you can see a bit more, there we go. I'm going to right click and go to build, so it brings up this expression builder box just here. And then I can use these little expansion arrows here, that's my database computers. If I expand the forms, if I um, expand all forms, there's my form repairs. And then remember it was called device type. So if I double click on device type, it adds it to the expression builder. So now, if I click on OK, Let's just uh, zoom back. So now what's going to happen is that device type okay, will be filtered by whatever happens to be in the current record or the current row uh, for the devices. So if the device type happens to be laptop, it will pull that through into this query. So I hope that makes sense. We're going to click on close, say yes to save. And we're almost there. Um, just going to click on the view here and just see how that, this works. Here, I've got the cost and the device type. Here, things are all a bit uh, the wrong way around. I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. If I go down to des design view, under design, there is an option over on the right hand side called tab order. Uh, hopefully, that should change. Now I'm going to drag, um, let's go to, I've got auto order here, that's better. So, device types first, then device subtype, then cost. That's good. So, that's the tab order in design view. That's good, so if I go, that's it, that's better. So it's device type, I select that, 
then this one should be pulled from this one. Now it is working, let's just give it a demonstration here. So at the bottom, if I click and add another item, so if I say laptop, at the moment, if I click on this drop down list, it is laptop, that's fine. If I go back and choose uh, mobile phone, I go and say, oh, it's still laptop. So what's wrong here? Well, what I need to do is I go back up home is click on this refresh button. So now when I click on the refresh button, if I go to the mobile phone, I'm just seeing the mobile phones. So illustrate that again, if I go to tablet now, if I click over here, it's still showing the last search until I click on the refresh button. Let's zoom in, just make sure you can see that. That's the refresh button at the top. And now when I click on the drop down list, I'm just looking at tablets. Now the obvious question is how do I do this without having to click on the refresh button there at the top? Well, you have to employ a macro for this. It's very simple. So you may have done macros in Excel, in Excel, you can click on the record button and you can record the macros. Uh, in Access, you have to sort of select them. But it is quite straightforward. I'll show you how to do it. So if um, I press Escape, actually, to come out of that record. There we go. That's, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's just use a Samsung tablet there. That's good. I'll better put up an amount. How much is it to repair? Out? Let's say £80 for there to say the screen was smashed and everything. All right, then. so creating a macro. So again, up to create at the top. So make sure we click on the create tab just here. Okay, so we're gonna click on that tab and we're gonna go over and click on macro just on the right hand side there. So I'm gonna click on macro and then click on the drop down list for macro and scroll all the way down until you find refresh. So you can see refresh just here, give that a click. Uh, oops, that's gone there. Let's just do that again. Refresh. So it says run menu command refresh. That's all you need to do. So what we'll do is we're going to close the macro down. Where it says, do you want to save? You say, yes, I do want to save it. And I'm going to just zoom in so you can see what we're going to call this. I'm going to call this one MCR refresh. Refresh. Click on OK. There we go, and there's our macro just there. Now, why have a macro for refresh when you've got the button at the top? Well, the beauty of a macro is you can attach that macro to what is known as an event. An event is a programmatic term for when something happens. So when do we want that macro to run? When do we want it to be refreshed? Well, basically, when we click on and change the device type here. So what's the event for that? Well, the event, well, I'll show you that one. Well, if we go back to design view. We click on the device type because it's that drop down list that we want to trigger the uh, the refresh macro. And I go over to the right hand side and if you can just move myself out. Oh, oh no, it's fine. That's, I can keep myself in there. If I click on event just over here, as you can see you've got event here. And then what you do is if you look down, there's one that's called after update. So this event triggers after a change has been made to any combo box or any drop down list. So we're going to go to after update and you see there's a tiny little drop down menu here. If I just uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see, there we go, the tiny little drop down menu and I'm going to choose MCR refresh, which is our refresh macro. And that's it. It's done. So all we need to do is save the page or save the form. Let's go to data sheet view now. So now when I'm entering in devices, I can click on the drop down list here. I can choose mobile phone. The event is triggered. So now I click and I'm just choosing my mobile phones here and I need to choose a price. So the next one I go down, I can choose desktop. Then this one here is just choosing the desktops and I can go here and I can choose the price and so forth. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I will put links to this database on our website so you'll be able to download it and have a little play around with it to help you understand. So this here is just helping you to uh, filter a drop down list based on another drop down list. So the drop down list that the initial one is device type and then the one we want to filter is device subtype. So if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please subscribe so you're not missing any more videos. If you've got anything out of this, please just give it a little thumbs up. Click on that little thumbs up button. It means so much um, to us. So really would appreciate you doing that. Any comments or any suggestions or any questions, 
uh, or any for next videos, etc., then just please mention them at the bottom. Uh, if you are a client of ours, then you can request any video uh, whatsoever, basically, within your uh, support period. So uh, look forward to getting your requests and hearing your problems as well. So if you ask a question, then we learn. Uh, there's one more thing. Thank you so much for watching.